30 years experience in mentoring, consulting, financial services, training, and human capital development sectors. She's a graduate of economics from the University of Ibadan, a fellow of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Nigeria, an alumnus of the Harvard um, Business School, and IMD in Switzerland. Join me as we welcome a cultural diplomat, a devoted mother, a distinguished professional. She sits on several financial boards and she is going to be discussing quality education, why Muslim must go the extra mile. Um, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, join me as we welcome Ajia Tamra Mat Musun Bilu Ulushoga. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, at least you called my name right. He is mumbled over my name. It's Tamra Mant, and it's something precious. You know, we all ask for Allah's Rahma, right? So it's a coinage from Rahma, okay? Tamra Mant. Auzu billahi minash shaitani rajim. Bismillahi rahmani rahim. Ashhadu la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadar Rasulullah. Abduhu wa rasuluhu. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama salli ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim na kamidu majid Allahumma barik ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim na kamidu majid Allahumma igfiri li wali wali daya wali mu'minina wal mu'minati wal muslimina wal muslimati bi rahmatika ya rahmani rahim I greet you my brothers and sisters in the best of greetings and say assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. I'm not sure about you, but I'm very, very glad to be here. I give thanks and praises to the Almighty. 2015, a lot of people between last Ramadan and this Ramadan, a lot of people have died. A lot of people have died this morning. But we are all here in good health and it has pleased Allah that we'll see this year. So I say Alhamdulillah, he has been gracious to me. I don't know about to you, but Allah has been really, really merciful to me. I'm here in good health. My family is right. My family, my, uh, the country is also right because um, we don't know what could have happened if the elections didn't go. So let's all give thanks and praises to um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and say Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Um, this Ramadan lecture is um, coming up at a very auspicious um, time. Um, Lukman and I go a, a long way back, and um, he's been trying to make me come to one of these lectures. But somehow, things haven't gelled. So, um, again, he gave me a long notice, and I said I'll be here. And lo and behold, I have to travel today. And I said to Lukman, we have to do this very early. The flight I was booked on was at 12 noon. And I said, mm, I can't do 12 noon. Well, alhamdulillah, I was given a later flight. So um, Allah wants this to, to, to happen. So that's why it's happening. So alhamdulillah that I'm seeing all of you. Now, the topic that I've been given is um, quality education. Uh, quality education and why Muslims should go the extra mile. Now, let's talk about education in its broadest sense. And it incorporates all efforts by society to accomplish desired objectives at personal and social levels. It involves the transmission of values, knowledge, and skills to others, and most often to younger generation. Over time, education has acquired various forms in different structures and various systems. However, what has been common in all these variations has been that there have been those who have taught and those who have learned and men, in many cases gone further to reteach it to others. As such, education is as old as the development of man. 
And for the purpose of this paper, I'm going to stick to I'm going to stick the discussion to um, focusing on education, training, and passing on of knowledge and skills to the young ones in particular. This form of education is well known and recognized in all parts of Nigeria. Even though the forms of, in which the education of young ones have been handled may have evolved, the ideology about the need to educate, equip, and inculcate certain values in children is an age-long part of many cultures in Nigeria. I wanted to take you back to the history of education in Nigeria to see where we are and where Muslims in particular are. Before the British arrived in the 19th century, there, was two major, there were two major forms of education in Nigeria. In the mainly Islamic North, education was restricted to, religious, to, to being religious in nature. In each Muslim community, a malam educated children from as young as five years in the teachings of the Quran and the alphabet, uh, uh, Arabic alphabet. Over time and during the colonial era, the larger cities set up more expansive Islamic schools that included such, a, such as math and science. And by 1913, these Islamic schools, mostly in the north, numbered 19,073 and had enrolled over 140,000 students. The indigenous system was the second type of education before the British occupation. This form of education was predominantly in the south among the Yoruba and Igbo cult uh, cultures. Children, mostly through their age groups, were taught the practical skills needed to function successfully in the traditional society. Now, let's talk about the introduction of Western education, because whether we like it or not, this is what um, um, the subject will focus on. The formal or Western type of education was introduced by British missionaries in the 1840s. This type of education first came into being by Thomas um, Birch Freeman, an English Methodist missionary who landed in Badagry on the 24th of September, 1842. Within a few weeks of his arrival, assisted by his um, cohort, William Gaffert, he, they opened a primary school, the very first Western education primary school in Nigeria. About four years later, the missionary school called the CMS opened their, second, their own secondary schools in Badagri and Abeokuta. In 1855, the Southern Baptist Convention from the United States of America came into Nigeria and opened two schools in Lagos and Ubumosho. And in 1960, the Roman Catholic Church arrived in Nigeria from Brazil and opened their own school in Lagos to cater for the educational needs of emancipated Africans arriving in Nigeria. The United Presbyterian Church of Scotland, spearheaded by Reverend Hope Waddell, opened their own school in Calabar in 1846 and another one in Boni in 1847. There was soon a need for more advanced educational training to cater for the increasing need of skilled and semi-skilled Nigerians, both for the local um, people as well as for the missions. This advanced education resulted in the birth of the first secondary school in Nigeria by way of CMS Grammar School, which was founded on the 6th of June in 1859 by Reverend Thomas Babentin Macaulay. Other secondary schools follow suit, Lagos, Baptist, Lagos Methodist Boys High School in 1878, St. Gregory's 1891, um, the Roman Catholic were, were the founders of St. Gregory's, Baptist Academy 1895. The first colonial secondary school was established by the colonial masters they called it King's College and it was established in 1909. CMS, in collaboration with indigents, established their own schools Adekota Grammar School in 1908, Ijebode Grammar School 1913, Ibadan Grammar School 1913, Ondo Baptist, Ondo Boys High School 1918. By the time the British combined the northern and the southern protectorates in 1914, there were a total of 11 secondary schools 
but only one King's College was run by the colonial masters. Every other secondary school in Nigeria at that time was being run by missionaries. Um, now, let's talk about Islamic education. Islamic education had always been part of the religious duty of Muslims. As such, it is incentric to the practice of the faith and as old as the faith itself. In many parts of northern Nigeria, Islamic education had a stratified format as well as being well established. Traditionally, children learnt up to one or two chapters of the Holy Quran by rote from a local malam before they were five or six years old. Religious learning included the Arabic alphabet and the ability to read and copy texts in the language as, as well as um, the text that you require for daily prayers. Any Islamic education um, provided such instruction in a malam's house under a tree or in the local mosque. The, this primary level was the most widespread. A smaller number of young Muslims who wished or who came from wealthier homes um, went on to um, examine the meanings of the Arabic texts later grammar, syntax, arithmetic, algebra, logic, rhetoric, jurisprudence, and theology were added. These subjects required specialist teachers at the advanced levels. After these levels, students traditionally went on to the former Islamic centers of learning. Early attempts at the introduction of Western education in the North was met with stiff resistance. Though the missions got some foothold in the mid um, uh, middle belt, early attempts in the north prov proved abortive as the case of the mission secondary school by, for the sons of chiefs, which was opened in Zaria in 1907 but had to close down um, just two years later. Islamic education had reached an uh, appreciable level before the introduction of western system of education in southwestern Nigeria. Upon the arrival of Christian missionaries and subsequently the incursion of the colonial rule, Islamic education remained very separate and distinct from Western education. For a long time, there were resistance by members of the Muslim community, both in the North and the South, to enroll in Western education. And this was largely because Western education was strongly tied to Christian ethos and religious instruction. As such, the Muslims who did, enrollment, uh, who did enroll in many of these schools had to conform to the Christian tenets of the schools. On the other hand, the strictly Islamic, secondary, uh, the strictly Islamic schools were increasingly perceived as inferior in the sense that they only taught the Quran and while they provided high levels of scholarship, the subject learned had little or nothing to do with the current bearings and what was learned in the Western system of education. There was therefore a vacuum for several years which led to two separate systems of education with neither fully meeting the needs of Muslims who sought Western education but under the auspices of Islamic tenants. The first education ordinance in 1882 provided some respite in the sense that schools were now categorized into two, secondary schools and assisted schools, with the assisted schools being the private mission schools who received government aid upon meeting certain conditions. There was, however, still a gap. While the Christian schools attend both the schools that were providing Western education or, and the ones that catered for their own spiritual upbringing, the Muslims had at best the option of attending secular schools where no formal, uh, formal instruction on religion was given and as such the rate of Muslim enrollment did not significantly increase. The gap was however breached by Jubril Martins, a foremost Muslim lawyer who was the first elected Muslim legislator in Lagos in the Federal Legislative Council and the pioneer president of the Nigerian Bar Association and the chairman of the Muslim Pilgrims Welfare Board for the Western region. 
He sought to create a premier secondary school that would provide quality Western education while also catering for the spiritual needs of Muslims. Through his dogged efforts in the leadership capacity of the Ahmadiyya, he created a blueprint for the founding, funding and management of Muslim primary and secondary schools. The culmination of self-help, direct labor and the spirit of philanthropy among the uh, members of Ahmadiyya and in the Martins led to and in Martins led to the eventual establishment of the first Muslim secondary school, Sakati Numbu Memorial Secondary School, Elagbata, Elagbata in Lagos in 1948. Named after Dr. Abdul Hamid Sakati Numbu, a foremost Ahmadi and the first Muslim doctor in Nigeria. And we should note, and it should be emphasized, that this was coming a clear century. Remember, the first mission secondary school was in 1842. So our own first secondary school was in 1948, over a century after the first Christian missionary schools. So we know that there's a lot of gap. In the space of two decades, the Martins leadership, under the Martins leadership, the number of the Muslim, uh, the movement group, of which Jubril was the primator had reached 13. The schools were strategically scattered across western region covering the present Lagos, Oyo and Edo states. The establishment of Muslim schools increased access to Muslims, of Muslims to western education. Along with this, the idea of establishing and running a Muslim private school ceased to merely be a theoretical idea but also became a practical experience as it has come to stay. The successes of the Ahmadiyya inspired the Ansaruddin Society of Nigeria and other, Muslims, uh, other Muslim societies to establish their own primary and secondary schools. Presently, the combination of various Muslim groups collectively have over 2,400 Muslim secondary schools in Nigeria. But this is way, way less than what the, Muslim, the Christians have. They have in excess of 10 times as many schools. Let me quickly talk to you about the present state of education in Nigeria. Despite the differences in practice and general outlook, the efforts and the pioneers of secondary school education cannot be underestimated as they both charted new frontiers in the drive for better education and skills acquisition for Nigerians and also imbibed the core moral and spiritual ethos in the young. The specific impact of Muslim schools since the creation of the first one cannot be measured in quantifiable terms as it helped to give the Muslim community a clear identity and ensured the passing down of Muslim tenants to the newer generations while guaranteeing quality education that was both competitive and relevant to the demands of the society. The age-old Islamic schools now have not only found a place in the modern Muslim schools, but have evolved to meet the demands of the global world. Along with secular and Christian private schools, they have also filled the gaps created by weak federal and state institutions and have served to ensure that the standard of education in Nigeria has not plummeted be, be, um, beyond its current level, which is largely um, below par. And education in Nigeria, I, I did a research at the time, and in Africa, Nigeria's percentage um, allocation to education was the smallest, South Africa the highest. Education, especially through religious um, schools, have had a tremendous impact on students, communities, and the nation as, well, as a whole. However, there are still many areas that still require more input. One of such areas is the effective role of parents in the education of their children or wards. The question that often arises is how much is required of parents? What do they have to do to provide their kids or their children with excellent education? You can't, you know, our children, our wards rely on us. So the role of parents in providing 
quality education cannot be um, overemphasized. It must be stated that the first and primary role of parents in this regard is to fend for the educational needs of their children. This means that they have a duty of ensuring that their children go to good schools and that they fund the education of their wards. However, the job is far from being done after this requirement is met. The most important and lasting gift or inheritance a parent can give a child is knowledge of Islam. This is not only because it is the right and just way of bringing children up, it is also because the tenants of the faith require and demand it. Islamic education for children is imperative as parents are accountable for the successes and failures of their words. According to Abd Abdallah bin Umar, may Allah be pleased with him, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, every one of you is a guardian and responsible for what is in his custody. A man is the guardian of his father's property and is responsible for it. So all of you are guardians and responsible for your words and the things under your care. Said bin al As, may Allah be pleased with him, narrated that Allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, a father gives his child nothing better than a good education. Every young person is a living being with tremendous potential to love and to hate, to succeed and to fail, to live and to merely exist. He has within him a spark of talent, accomplishment of creativity, of love for his fellow man. Our job as parents and educators is to find that spark and nurture it to the fullest. In doing so, the adults in their life need to speak the same language. It is important for for parents to strike a healthy balance in ensuring that their children gain good education while staying true to their religion and to, more, to good morals. Education is of paramount importance in this globalized world and as such, and unlike other most earlier Muslims in the colonial or pre-colonial days, parents can no longer afford to overly shield their words and prevent them from gaining qualitative Western education. However, they must be willing and be able to go, a, to go the extra mile to ensure that Islam is not lost on the children. They must begin to exercise the same favor, favor that they show when obtaining Western education for, us, for obtaining Islamic education. Islam is a way of life and encompassing. Islam provides timeless principles for its adherents and inculcates morals that transcend mere education or literacy. It is common knowledge that the gap between the number of Christian schools at all levels, from the primary to the universities. Somebody tell me, how many universities, Muslim do, universities do we have? How many? Four? Five? Uh, less than ten. True or false? We certainly have less than 10, but I tell you that there are 56 private universities in, in, in Nigeria. So if we as Muslims, you know 10, I'm inflating the 10, we probably have about 5. I'm, I, I don't have the statistics, but there are less than 10. So that means that the Christians have multiples of what we have, right? You know, somehow, although blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we don't pay attention to the establishment of schools which will cater for our own needs. Many Christians will rather send their words to schools that are affiliated to their religious inc inc inclinations, be it Catholic, Methodist, Baptist, or Pentecostal, and will be willing to pay amounts required in fees. On the other hand, my Muslim brothers and sisters, right? We shy away from that responsibility. Muslim schools are perceived, are generally perceived as being inferior. As soon as a school is labeled Muslim or Islamic, my elite brothers and sisters in Islam will often assume it is substandard and won't send their children there. Others will believe that it should be feasibility, right? Mm, for the sake of Allah. So you shouldn't charge any fees. If you pay peanuts, you get monkeys. 
you get what you sow. So if you don't invest, you will not reap. We know that, you know, if you don't invest, nothing will come. Meanwhile, these same elite Muslims will send their words to Christian missionary schools or secular schools because they are perceived as providing quality education. But I also am the first to own up that we need to bring up the standard of Muslim labeled schools. In order to, be, uh, to close the gap, Muslims have to make a conscious effort as establishing schools at every Kedah that are along international standards. Obviously, this costs a lot of money and we should be willing to invest not only the time but also the energy and time to ensure that the schools succeed. Even with the establishment of schools, success will not be achieved if you don't have teachers. Let me tell you my own personal example. Lukman has told you I have a secondary school. It's my pet uh, uh, project. And when I was going to start, set up the secondary school, City of Knowledge Academy, it was supposed to be purely Islamic. Muslims were the ones that advised me, don't label it Islamic. So what do we try to do? We don't label it Islamic. So during Salat times, children are allowed to go and say their Salat, right? Um, we, 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 we just try to make allowance. But it is difficult. I sat on the interview panel. We interviewed 30 teachers. Guess how many were Muslims? Two. Two qualified teachers were Muslims. And they didn't pass the interview. So we need to invest our time in going for proper training. It shouldn't be something that I just happened to do. Now, um, sorry, I've lost. Uh, okay, that, this was what I was saying, that there is a major death of qualified Muslim teachers in the country. In the 21st century, as children are global citizens, and as such, we need to make them proud, and not being apologetic about, uh, about Muslims. And the reason why we lose a lot of our children to the other religion is because we are perceived, we are too apologetic about our religion, right? We need, and it's because we think we are, we are inferior. Um, let, let me go on, maybe questions will, will come. The environment they are taught and their teachers have to be contemporary in outlook. Investing in our children's education is imperative to make sure that our children take their rightful place as leaders of tomorrow. It is a vicious cycle. Not going to good primary schools means that you don't get admitted to good secondary schools. Without a good secondary school, it is unlikely that you get admitted into a good university. Without a good university degree, you will not be able to get a good job in order to get a good living to be able to afford a decent school for your children. So the circle of poverty, of illiteracy, of mediocrity continues to go on. Unless occasionally, where Allah in his infinite mercy decides to smile on the family and the children get a scholarship to go to a good school. The result of this lack of attention to education is why we have more of Muslim vulcanizers, butchers, traders, you know, petty, tra uh, petty traders, uh, factory attendants, rather than scientists doctors, teachers. I'm not saying we don't have, but they're too few compared to our Christian brothers and sisters. Look at the boards of multinationals and corporate organizations. When I sat on the board of Guarantee Trust Bank, apart from the MD, no, the MD had even gone. I was the only Muslim. On most boards that I sit, I'm usually the only female and the only Muslim. So there's a death of qualified people. And it boils down to the foundation, which is education. So let me quickly conclude because uh, my daughter has given me time warning. It is important that we make a commitment to our children to raise them to be righteous and responsible Muslims who will subsequently treat us with kindness and respect. 
with this kindness and respect carrying over to the larger society, making them responsible and productive members of the society. As an Ummah, we need to get our priorities right. As we know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself values education since the first word in the revelation of the Holy Quran is Ikra. We cannot continue, we cannot blame some parents for not sending their words to the so-called Muslim schools because while a number are very well run and professionally too, a major are unstructured, shabby in appearance and poorly run. We must be mindful that each generation sets its own background, creates its own values, decides upon the path of action and makes contribution to society accordingly. The family unit plays a vital role. Um, for excellent education as parents, we must be able to teach our, our, our words to do the right things and set an example. Simply put, we must walk our talk. As parents, we must not give contradictory messages to our words as they begin to form principles, values, ethics in life. While technology, right, um, education empowers knowledge and logical thinking. Our children will be able to decipher between what is right and what is wrong when they're properly educated. And this will make them less susceptible to brainwashing as we have in, those, in the cases of those young kids that join radical groups such as ISIS and Boko Haram. They are very, if they are very well engaged and earn a good life, likelihood and not idle or poor, right, then we know that we are winning the war because we know that one of the causes of these radical groups is its injustice as well as poverty. Um, while technology and globalization have presented many challenges in raising God-fearing children, they have also provided various tools in ensuring proper Islamic education. And these tools must be encouraged and used instead of allowing our children to succumb to the various pressures all around. So we need to be very, very careful about what our, what our children have access to. Proper access to quality Islamic reading materials are available on the internet and various other opportunities to seek and gain Islamic knowledge is highly interconnected and must be explored and maximized. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless our children. May he make them pious, God-fearing, insightful, and obedient to him. May he give us the wherewithal to provide for the physical, educational, spiritual well-being of our children. May, he, may they give us joy and comfort in our old age. May they not be a source of trial for us. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasanatan wa filai rata hasanatan wa kina azabana Subhana rabika rabi li saati amwa ya sifun Wa salamu alimu salin wa alhamdulillahi rabi la alamin Salamu alaikum Wa khayru khalqi allahi rahmatun bil alameen Kabirullah We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for our lecturer For making it easy for her Let's recite surat al kawthar for her Okay, she has charged parents to go the extra mile. She has charged us as individuals to also go the extra mile, train ourselves, equip ourselves for the challenge ahead. May Allah make it easy for Muslims. Questions, please. Any question for our lecturer? All praises and gratitude is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the control of all affairs. Admonition Islamic Center ever express our solidarity with Nigerians at this critical moment of our nationhood due to the scourge of COVID-19 globally. We especially feel for the Muslim Ummah, who from all indications will have to start the 2020 Ramadan season in complete lockdown. There won't be tarawi, no fiscal theft sessions, no joint iftar, no itikaf, and possibly no idel fitri prayers. For the same reason, the AIC is supposed to be 10 years this year and arrangements have been concluded to feature 10 guest speakers for 10 hours at the prestigious National Art Theatre Igomu Lagos on Saturday 2nd May 2020. But by Allah's will, it will not hold again. We take solace in the fact that Allah is the best of all planners and He alone knows best. We beseech Allah to spare our lives till next year's Ramadan 2021, inshallah. We pray for Allah's forgiveness that Allah heals the world 
world puts an end to this pandemic and give us the privilege to be together for his sake again to witness more Ramadan in good health. I mean, inshallah, our focus this 2020 Ramadan in our own little way is to provide food stops to the fasting Muslims who are in need. May your rewards be great with Allah as you join us to make this dream a reality. For inquiries, call 0802-335-5870-0808-690-5870 or 0708-378-7920. Account details, Admonisha Islamic Center, Bank, Stalin Bank. Account number 050-021-1796. Lukman Adekombi for AIC. Ramadan Mubarak. people take it upon themselves to go out and talk to young people about where they should go in because if we had it as a program where we go and tell secondary school students the benefits the, the the beauty of going into education as a profession because we need them to create an institution that will build new muslims they will gladly go into it but everybody has the mentality of i'm not a doctor i'm not a lawyer an accountant i am nobody so how are we putting that into place? Thank you. Maybe you should just do a bit of the questions. The next person, please. Can I see the hands? Second, two, three, four, five. Sisters, we are fine. We understand everything. Okay. Seven. Okay. Is that all? Eight. Please hold on. Eight people. Okay, eight. That's eight. All right, Bismillah. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Now, my question is, realistically speaking, we know that um, our Western counterparts are far away from where the Muslims are in terms of education today. Now, when you ask us to go extra miles to pursue education, are you saying that we should go neck deep into Western education to draw out values that can be needed in Islamic education? Or where is that extra mile that we need to go if what we have is substandard as educational um, facilities? Thank you. Next person, please. That's here. Yes. Assalamu alaikum. May Almighty Allah give Islamic world more of your kind in great and greater numbers. My question is this. You, you, I, I want to know how you are able to handle these delicate issues of um, having Christians puppies in your school. Because I know from experience that um, in Christian schools where we have Muslim students, they are very, very emphatic that they will not allow Muslims to wear hijabs in their schools. Now, I want to know whether you experience the same thing in your schools because um, I don't know, but... I am sure that you have some of them who want their puppies to come to your school. Do they conform or do they really want to go along with your school's uh, standard and policies that puppies, should, especially our ladies, should come with their hijabs? I, I want to know whether there has not been any controversy from that end. Or do you allow them to have okay. their way? That's okay. I think she has got something. Thank you. Please let's make our questions very brief. Thank you for the sake of time. Is that all from the brother's side? There's somebody here and okay. Give him the mic. Then two people in front. So that's all. Uh mine is in between uh, a question and a suggestion to uh, the proprietors. Uh, I'm thinking from process improvement standpoint, 
if there is any concerted effort by any group called whatever association of muslim proprietors to see together having identified this problem put up a framework together and you know design a solution to help our brothers and sisters in the education sector maybe probably twice or three times in a year you identify the problem and design solution tailored towards resolving this problem by organizing like seminars, symposium, or a short program, one month, week, week, weekend, on weekend days, three months, just to improve the quality and standard because it is very pathetic. Like you said, you have about 30 people interviewed for a position in your school and just about two Muslims and they were not even qualified or passed. Salam alaikum. Allah for the moon and the stars. Assalamu alaikum. Please let's make our questions brief. Thank yes, um, mine is a short comment, and um, it's this that there is no doubt that the few Muslims who have attempted going into the educational sectors are by themselves very competent, very forward looking, and the like. But, but I think moving forward. If there's um, the possibility of harnessing what we have individually together, I'm talking partnerships. The best businesses are partnerships. Government itself is a conglomeration of partnerships. Uh, and I think that we're limited in funds, we're limited in the, the, the ideas we have. Even as good as we are, as individuals, I, I think we who are in whatever fields, and it goes beyond just teaching now. We should seriously think about partnerships because in the long run, it has more advantages than its disadvantages. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. From your lecture, Asma, you told us the gap between the Christians and the Muslims in the quality of education in the same time. My comment is brief. If, if you try to remember in the early last century and the beginning of this century, you, re you recall that the gap between the Islamic uh, and West, the, the Muslims in Western education and the Christians was so wide that in almost, even in this Lagos, you can, if there, are, if there are problems between Muslims, it is the Christians that you, the, the first, the, the plaintiff's lawyer would be a Christian and the other person's lawyer would be a Christian. That, that, was the, that was how bad it was. But the thing is, the level of education of Muslims has so much improved now. I myself happen to be a product of Muslim college, Jebu Day, and I knew the level of the, the excellence in education at my time. Even in recent time, I read in the papers the level of uh, the, the performance in that school. So my comment is simply that if we things are so much improved more than what we choose to have, and that was what you seems to you did not seem to point out in your lecture, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Sorry, we can't take that question. One sister, the sister that raised her hand, please. Please take the mic to the sister. Thanks to Allah for the moon and the stars. Praise him. You've had enough from the brothers, please. Thank you. Take hold of your iman. Don't give it. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Okay, so I have two questions. Um, the first is the fact that, okay, um, mindset we have to Muslim schools because I can say that I also have that kind of mindset and then those that are like um, that share the same standards with good schools are very expensive so you find Muslim parents that actually want their children to go to Muslim schools withdrawing because when they hear the school fees they're like ah no okay I'd rather take my child to a secular school 
So how do we address that? Where we have uh, Muslim schools that have good standards but very expensive, how can we build a gap between the affordability and the desired knowledge that we want our kids to have? And then the second question uh, has to do with how you are able to merge your uh, family life with your, with your very busy schedule. Because as a member of um, a board, as a member of boards in financial institutions, I'm sure that you have a very busy schedule. So I want to understand how you are able to merge both worlds and you know come out successful. Salam alaikum. Alaikum salam. Give thanks to questions that are here. Most of them have been asked. Sorry, sister, I won't be able to take it. Thank you. Um, I have a few questions here. Um, this person says, "Can you give?" Can you please give parents tips on pursuing quality education for their children? I think that's part of it and so on. Then somebody says, why are Muslims psychologically inferior? Then somebody says, what of a qualified Muslim lady at an interview but was denied because she wore the hijab? Then somebody said, how can you help a child with dyslexia? I think that's all. Other questions have been subsumed in other, all the questions that have been asked. وخير خلق الله رحمة في العالم. Because with all sense of humility, there are very very few people like me, right, who are in my position. So I hardly ever refuse to go to a Muslim or an Islamic event if I can if, if I can um, help it. So we need more and more people and to have structured mentorship program so for the brother who suggested that um, thank you um, um, the next question was somebody asking what well, um, that um, what do I mean by going the extra mile that is it going deep 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 but that was exactly what um, um, how he put it you know the, the paper is why Chris why 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 parents have to go the extra mile in ensuring that our words, our children have quality education. And I'm saying that it's a question of prioritizing our, um, our lives, right? If you, if you realize that your ch children are your tomorrow, you will do all that you need to do, right? Maybe within the confines of your own pocket. So if you can't send your child, your word, to a a private school yes they can go to a government school but also and make sure that your children are in school and because you don't want to lose the islamic education augment this by letting them have islamic education at home now somebody saw some, some something about um people are uh, that uh, muslims are from poor backgrounds how do you build um standard schools and I'm going to merge that with a question um, that says um, something about the mindset about uh, my, one of my sisters here, something about the mindset of Muslim schools and that when you hear about the, a Muslim, a standard or a very good Muslim um, private school that it's mostly expensive. The Christian private schools, especially those that are affiliated to, um, to a church, they are supported by the church. Like Lagoon is supported by the Catholic church. So Lagoon will not be as expensive as like a day waterman, right? Or like a redeemer's. A redeemer's, church, a redeemer's school is not cheap by any standard. But if a parent knows that it is my responsibility, it is my, my charge that I have to ensure that my children, we all pray for our children to be better than us. So it is a sacrifice that you have to make, right? Nothing good comes easy. Nobody is going to roll over. You know, let's forget about this. Let's be innovative in our thinking. What can we do? So, you know, poverty is a vicious cycle. If you say because you are poor, you're not going to get out of this poverty, you won't. So don't let have that victim, uh, uh, victim mentality. What would I do to ensure that my child is better than me or my child lives 
I'm not saying that there is anything wrong with being a vulcanizer. We need vulcanizers. There is nothing wrong with being a, 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 a trader. There's nothing wrong. But I'm also saying, yes, while they are vulcanizers, while they are butchers, well, they are traders. Let's also have doctors. Let's also have lawyers. Let's also, because you want your child to stand shoulder to shoulder with the other people. So while they are asking about science, he's answering about science. When they are asking about the hadith, he's answering about the hadith. It makes him confident, right? I, my, my nephew, they're very well read. Um, he's a malam. You know, all this um, tablik with beard and things like that. He went to university in, um, in, in, in the States and he did his master's in Saudi Arabia. So that was the time you had this 9-11. And I asked him that, what do you think? And he said to me, but Auntie Mo, those are not Muslims. That is what education does. It makes you think. It makes you have logical and independent thoughts. And that is what we need to ensure that our children have. That is what I'm saying. Then somebody was asking about my school in particular. Alhamdulillah, I own the school. I call the shots. I had two people from Zamfara, right? They didn't have, I bought hijab. I have hijab. So if your children come, if you don't have hijab, I have hijab to give you. Right? So they are allowed to wear their hijab. I bought a buyer for them because when um, I pay a malim from Taswed, Taishulari the, uh, University of Education, to come and teach them Arabic, right? And to come and teach them about Islam. So he is on the payroll. That is my own contribution that is my own service to Allah right so it is my school I can't have a school and you're saying that my child cannot wear hijab it will not happen the principal will go the teachers will go so um, CKA you're allowed to have your hijab but it is not also compulsory because truly young children at times want to conform right so some will not wear their hijab but those that want to wear their hijab alhamdulillah and I will not tell a 10 year old that you have to wear a hijab when he doesn't wear a hijab at home. I didn't start wearing a hijab until I was way into, you don't want to know where. <laughs> okay. Um, so yes, you can wear your hijab. We make special arrangements for Muslims. My children are fasting, right? They're fasting. We make provision for them to, um, to break their fast and we, 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 we ensure the religion is practice and my own charge is to ensure that we want to be like an ideal place where you have the Christians and you have the Muslims and everybody is comfortable in itself and my charge is to bring up well brought up cultured children and that is why our bylines our values our cultural character and confidence if you have the confidence about yourself, you'll be able to do anything you want to. Um, I got another brother who made a suggestion about uh, association of uh, Muslim proprietors. I think that is wonderful. We need to support ourselves. I'm not an educationist, so I don't, I don't profess to know. My school is barely two years old, so I'm just learning. So if such an, um, an organization um, uh, um, is in existence, I'll gladly join because we need to support ourselves. And I'm going to tie that with uh, my brother over here who said something about harnessing partnerships. I didn't want to build this school alone. I called my various Christ uh, Muslims essentially, Muslim brothers and sisters, and let's join hand. We wanted to raise 400 and 50 million at that time. I raised precisely 450,000. The brother that gave me 450, I'm sure he dashed me the money. And I just said, I, will, I just returned his check. Right? So partnerships can let you do a lot more. 
and we need to harness our resources to ensure that we, we achieve what we want to achieve. And my brother was saying that there, there, there used to be a much wider gap in education between the Christians and the Muslims. I totally agree. I agree that we're getting better, but we're not there. That's my charge. Do you understand? So I'm not saying that we're, we're worse than where we were a century ago. No. But we need to bridge that gap as quickly as possible. Um, okay. Um, we've also talked to um, about um, Muslim schools. For the... Um, once the, for the schools that are affiliated to um, Islamic sects like Ansaruddin, like Ahmadiyya, uh, and Waruddin, and things like that, they, will, they, they, they are trying, but they might not be able to uh, um, be as, as good as they have the potential. Because even the mosques are struggling, right? I, Allah has blessed me, right? So I'm the first to acknowledge that. But I get a little bit embarrassed when on Juma, right? You can see somebody who can afford to put a hundred naira down and the person is still struggling for 19 naira change. Where would 10 naira? What can you buy with 10 naira? You can't even buy tom tom now, right? So the more we give, remember Allah has told us that he will give us multiples from 10 times to 700 times and it's going to be like one coin uh, one corn and you plant the corn and just imagine what the the outcome of uh, of that corn will be so we just need to continue to give and where we can we also have a scholarship Lukman knows about this we have a scholarship uh, um, I, 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 I solicit scholarship for my, uh, from my, my friends. We just had an, um, um, a, a test. The head of school said, oh, we've run the test, um, somebody. And deep inside me, because she's a Christian, I know her own constituency will be Christians. So I'm gonna be giving scholarships to uh, um, Christians. It's not gonna happen. It's not gonna happen. So I said to her, just wait. We need to run another test without telling her precisely why. So I called the likes of um, Lukman. I put it on my... Uh, um, you know, the problem is that we don't even take advantage. Wimbis called me. They had this competition that Wimbis is um, women in business and management. They had this competition that um, women should submit proposals and they were going to get an award and go to, for an internship in the United States. A friend called me that, Antimo, we don't have any submission from a woman, a Muslim woman. So how can you benefit? So we, we now say, oh, they didn't choose me. But you didn't apply, perhaps because you didn't qualify. You didn't qualify because, because you are not um, properly educated. So that is why education is paramount. Now, where was I? So the scholarship. So I now called my people and said, okay, let's run scholarship. I put it on my, my not Facebook, Blackberry. I sent messages around. Very few Muslims answered me. That's the problem. You can take a donkey to the stream. You can't force them to, 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 to the donkey to drink. So we're too lazy. We don't even want to put in an effort. But alhamdulillah, they did the tests on the 13th. The top two were higher than the top of the other, uh, um, the first test that we did. So at least, alhamdulillah, I could say, oh, I just said, oh, you know what? I, had, I told her to give me the, um, the results. Then I now spied two Muslim ch children. And I said, you know, I, I, I really, let's be fair. Let's just give the top two. And she said, oh, that's a very good idea. She didn't know what was my thinking. Because we also have to be strategic in our approach. You don't want to be uh, uh, antagonistic, but you have to put yourself in a position to be able to support our people. Very, very, unless 
it's a, um, a friend who is a Christian that has brought somebody on scholarship. Most of the people that are on scholarship are actually Muslims because we actually need it more. For land, land, I we used to sit on a board called Fig, right? Foundation for Islamic Growth, and the idea was for us to coach primary students, primary school students, so that they can be able to get into secondary school. So I was saying, are we going to just say Muslim primary schools? Fala told me something very incisive. And she, he said to me, we don't have to tell them that it's just Muslims, but you watch. 90% of them, the indigents, were who? Muslims. So we're still able to achieve what we wanted to achieve. So we have to make an extra effort. That is what the essence of this paper is. For the more uh, uh, um, endowed in, uh, of us, we have to make it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a sacrifice, you know. Some, uh, one uh, of these malams called me and, and, and said, I'm sorry I have to be bothering you all the time, but there are very, very few of you. But the richest people in Nigeria are actually Muslims, right? It's all a question of priorities. So if we don't get our priorities right, we will continue to lag behind. Um... And the last question was, okay, I think I have, well, the last question was by um, somebody that was saying, uh, um, how do I combine my work, right? Allah has been faithful, right? But I work very, very hard. I work hard. I have a very good support system. And Allah has made it easy for me. That's all I can say. Subhana wa rabbil sati amaya sifun wa salamu alim musalim wa alhamdulillah rabbil alamin. Allahu 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 Allahu